Welcome to my video on fatty liver. I'm going to start by talking about what it is. So right here, we have some healthy hepatocytes. Hepatocytes are just liver cells. And a normal healthy liver cell will have a sort of centrally located nucleus, which we'll color in in blue. And one of the many amazing things about hepatocytes is that they can deal with almost any type of macronutrient. So they store little droplets of lipids in liposomes in their cells. So that's the healthy situation. When someone develops fatty liver, then we see a change. We see over time, the hepatocytes start storing way too much fat. And that word for storing fat is called steatosis, which just means fat. And this occurs generally over a long period of time. And at the end of the video, we'll talk about some of the things that contribute to that. So now we look at these hepatocytes and the nucleus is crowded over into the corner of the cell because there's so much fat filling the hepatocytes. And in fact, instead of being called micro vesicles of fat, now they're so big they're called macro vesicles. So lots and lots of fat in here. So the nucleus is squashed up in the corner. And the liposomes have become very big and fill much of the cell. That's going to inhibit function in the hepatocyte. And in fact, a diagnostic point that we could make, just put this right up here. If a biopsy is done, or on autopsy, if the cells are looked at under the microscope, you can actually visualize the macrovesicles macro of fat and that will be part of how a diagnosis could be made. Okay, so we would now call these not necessarily super healthy, although the person will literally often has no symptoms at all if their hepatocytes are starting to look like this. But at this point, I would call these, I'm sort of making up this word on my own, but steatotic <laughs> hepatocytes because they steatosis is occurring. And then we're not always sure what makes this change happen, but again, over time and maybe some genetic predisposition and some other factors, some of the cells will start dying. And when they die, sometimes we can get a lot of inflammation. So we could call that necrosis, so cell death, with inflammation. And this is another place where diagnosis can occur, or a part of diagnosis, I guess I could say. What will happen here is, um, and I'll use red again for a diagnosis, is that the blood levels of um, liver enzymes may become elevate, elevated. And this is another thing then that could be an in indication that there is damage to the liver cells and some of their enzymes are spilling out into the blood. Okay, so now if you took these hepatocytes that were filled with too much fat and not functioning as well as they should, and then you end up with a situation over here where some of them are dying. So here's the one that is still just filled with fat.
and then this would represent a cell that has died. So a necrotic hepatocyte broken down and not only that but then around it collagen fibers begin to replace those dead cells and we can color those with this pink highlighter. So collagen fibers are really just a scar. So imagine now that the liver has become much stiffer and it is becoming scarred. So this then makes the liver stiff and decreases definitely its ability to function. Then another diagnostic I'd like to mention here is something fairly new to the US can be done with a fibro scan. It's kind of like a fancy ultrasound and it sends sound waves against the liver and if there's a lot of fat in the liver then it affects how much time it takes for the sound to come back again and if there's a lot of scarring in the liver that also affects so the fibro scan can actually give you an indication both of the steatosis so how much fat is in the liver and also the level of scarring so it's a really great tool because it's non-invasive unlike a biopsy the problem is once we get to this situation the liver damage may be irreversible. And at this point we can call it steatohepatitis. And notice that the itis indicates that there's inflammation in the liver. So this really is fatty liver with inflammation. May be irreversible. If it, this damage was caused by alcoholism, then it might be referred to more specifically as alcoholic hepatitis or um, cirrhosis of the liver is generally a term reserved for alcoholism that causes this. So alcoholic steatosis or cirrhosis of the liver. And if it's not caused by alcohol, then it's NASH, which is non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. That's NASH. So here's a little interesting tidbit. It turns out that caffeine in the diet may actually inhibit this scar formation. So I'm kind of running out of room here, but um, let's put it like this. Caffeine may decrease this. And that would be great, right? And maybe one reason why caffeine can be considered protective of liver cells. So now I want to back up to the other side of the paper and talk about what it is that might lead to the healthy hepatocytes storing too much fat. And there are lots of different hypotheses for this, so on this page I really am just going to try to give you a few reasonable ideas. If I were having a discussion with a friend, I would say that most likely the thing that is Tight, most tightly associated with the fatty liver development is insulin resistance. So what I've drawn over here is an adipose, um, an adipocyte, which is found in adipose tissue. So it's a fat cell. And when it becomes insulin resistant, then it no longer is um, inhibited from breaking down its fat. So insulin resistance in the body, or specifically in, by the fat,
So if someone's fat cells are insulin resistant, then they are going to release more free fatty acids into their bloodstream than someone that's not insulin resistant and has the same amount of fat storage need, let's say. So more free fatty acids are going to be traveling in the blood vessels. And the liver cells then, they're like, what do we do with all these free fatty acids? And they start trying to help out and store them as triglycerides. And eventually that can lead to too much fat stored there. So hopefully I've helped you understand if someone is insulin resistant, they have more free fatty acids in their blood and that over time and maybe genetic predisposition can lead to fatty liver. Um, again, the reason this happens is because insulin normally says, hey, store fat and don't break it down. So if someone's insulin resistant, then they do break it down. So lipolysis is um, breaking down fat. and specifically triglycerides. So let's highlight free fatty acids in orange because that's um, an, an important player. Okay, then um, excessive alcohol. Probably doesn't need too much explaining as far as um, it damages the hepatocytes, but why does it make them store too much fat? And I was kind of curious about this. In the best um, I can find is that it actually uh, stimulates fat storage by the liver cells, that the alcohol itself can do that as it's broken down in the liver. But it can also damage the hepatocytes directly in high doses. probably starts out as a protective method, but ends up damaging the liver. So ethanol in the blood vessels, then heading to these healthy hepatocytes, and then as they try to deal with the ethanol, that actually stimulates them to store more fat. And then the third um, thing I would like to point out that, that seems to be associated with the development of fatty liver is a diet high in fructose or foods that have had fructose added to them. And this is because fructose is um, stored as triglyceride in the liver. The body, the liver doesn't put fructose out into the bloodstream the way it does with glucose. It has to deal with it then and there as soon as it's taken into the diet. So it might burn some for ATP. It will try to store some as glycogen, but then if there's still a lot left over, it stores it as fat. And so the way I put this here is it may max out the liver's uh, capacity And this again, we're talking over long periods of time, maybe decades. I'll put a question mark there. Okay, so then the last thing I want to um, put on here is underneath this healthy hepatocyte. Oh wait, here, let's uh, highlight fructose here and ethanol or alcohol here. So a healthy hepatocyte um, will store excess free fatty acids that's free fatty acids as triglyc oh and excess um, fructose as TGs and that stands for triglycerides these are just fats and then the byproducts of ethanol metabolism in the liver appear to stimulate further triglyceride storage.
So this might also be if we drink a lot of alcohol, then the food that we eat with it is more likely to be stored as fat during that meal. Free fatty acids and fructose. So if you'd like to color along with, with me, I do have these notes available for you on my Google channel. Um, and you can go to my Google Drive and get them. Have a great day. Bye.